Welcome to all of you there in California. And you know, I pray for California as much as I pray for any state. First of all, when God caught me up and showed me in 2008, our nation, he showed me 21 states coming into covenant with him for the future. But he showed me two states hanging in the balance. One was Florida, and Florida has shifted a lot. California was the other state, and it, it looked like this. It had two uh, uh, distinct tap roots going down through it, one of glory and one of evil, and they were contending with each other, one trying to absorb the other, but it hadn't been decided yet how, what was going to happen. I want to tell you, you are in the fight for your life. Uh, ben Lim, I don't know you personally. I look forward to one day getting to know you, and yet I, I keep wanting to some way be uh, a part to see your call in the future really mature and come into what God has for you. Uh, my daughter during this time moved to California several years ago and is an author there and a script writer and very, she and her husband are very successful. One of my grandsons lived there and because of that, I pray about the atmosphere of California. If ever there's a state that needs an open portal or an open heaven, it is California. And I hope as we move forward in this message, you see the importance of prevailing during this time to see California shelf. The prophetic word is so important on how we embrace it and what we do. In January of 2020, Cindy Jacobs, we were having a, a, one of our uh, gatherings here, and she prophesied and she said, Chuck, I don't understand it, but you're not going to be traveling the way you used to. I know this is very hard for me to say because I can't imagine. Now, that's because I had traveled for 500, 550,000 miles a year for many, many, many years. And uh, I got home and my wife said, I heard what Cindy said to you. She was watching on the web and she said, I heard what Cindy said to you and I don't know how that's gonna happen, but I know it's God. Well, we all know what happened in March, 2020. And God pulled me aside, rearranged my entire life. I've written, uh, several books. I've got a new book that's coming out this year on the signet ring. That's where you gain favor to go forward in your next assignment. And then I'm writing and finishing another book called Perspective, How We See Our Future. God had to redo my life during this time. And so with that, if you are going through great change, my health got restored during this time, is being restored during this time. If you're going through great change in your life right now, submit. Let the prophetic word have its work in you and watch how you come out as a new sharp threshing instrument with teeth. Now let's look. We're in a season, a new season of change. We're in a new church arising. And, you know, you build the church, you unlock the kingdom. The kingdom begins uh, to manifest in new ways. So this is a time that we watch for kingdom manifestations. How the church is being built right now is very key. Uh, it, we're not in a church season yet because the church has not been fully uh, erected to be what it's called to be for this season. It's a living organism, not a building, but buildings house how that living organism operates. Uh, it's so important for us to go back to Matthew 16 and see how all of a sudden Peter has revelation and out of the revelation of who the Meshach is, the anointed one is, uh, he, Yeshua prophesies to it. And in that prophecy, he says, upon this rock of revelation, you'll build the church and 
you will get keys to unlock the kingdom. The result is the gates of hell will not prevail. So really, that's what we're looking at. You have to remember when that word was given by Yeshua to his disciples that had been with him for three years, that they didn't even understand really the concept of ecclesia. They didn't understand how they were to govern in the future. So you really don't see that word first coming into maturation until you get to the book of Revelation where uh, the Spirit of God and Jesus is, uh, is visiting John and in that he's going over the seven key churches of an era. All of ha what they have, have accomplished, what they have fallen to, and what uh, they needed to be taught to overcome in the future. And I love the statement he made to those seven key churches that have developed over the next 70 years, if you'll hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, you will overcome. So really, we have to know what the Spirit is saying to the church in any era. So in this new era, we have to understand that God has an order for restoration. He has a prosperity. He has an order for prosperity in our life. Uh, and we're approaching Pentecost right now. We've come through Passover. And with that, we are coming t into a new breakthrough. So that's really important for us to understand. Now, one of the things I have seen since September of 2019 is the Lord called us aside, pulled us aside, created a divine pause so we could, so I believe he is identifying a new remnant. And he's got a new order for how we're going to enforce justice against the evil that has formed in the past, uh, I want to say, 70 years in our, in our history. And so we are in a whole new season. I don't say he's just... Uh, identifying a new remnant, I, I also say that he's repairing a remnant to arise, and that is really key because the word repair is linked with getting in order. It's linked with um, causing us to gain new strength. It's linked with bringing us into a whole new confidence and courage. So that all is working in us right now. We're rectifying our past so we can enter into the future. And that becomes very important. One book that I have written during this time that we have been in is called, along, I wrote this book with Alan Mubuftu, it's called Rekindle Your Altar fire. One of the things he's doing is repairing the altar that we come and we seek him at and the altar that we give upon and the altar that we find revelation from. Big difference between wisdom and revelation. Wisdom, you rely upon the things you've learned in past seasons and through past mistakes, but with that, Revelation is that which comes down and uncovers what we need to see to enter into our future. So I loose both of those right now. The spirit of wisdom, as Paul loosed it in the book of uh, Ephesians. And I also loose a spirit of revelation. So things that need to be uncovered can be uncovered. Now, we are living in a new era. Now, this whole 10-year era that we're living in that started as we crossed over into 2020 is called the Passover era. In Hebrew, it's called the Pay era. That means that we are passing over every year into a new dimension of what God is doing. This actually is our third year of passing over. And remember, God pulled us aside again in 2020 to get us all on the same page. He, from that historical Passover, he pulled us aside into another historical Passover that would uh, we would be moving in this Passover era. And Passover is linked with lots of different things that we'll discuss. But uh, I was asked to write a book at the beginning of 2020 called The Passover Prophecies. 
how the Lord has decided. This book is very important for each one of us to understand this era that we're living in. So I want to encourage you to get that book and to move with it and to understand Every Passover to Pentecost is very key as we develop our footing for the year that we're living in. See, God's not in time, but we're in time, so we have to understand time in a new way. Now, this era is also an era of war. This pay era is where God is. It's about breath. It's about voice. God is breathing down from heaven. But it is causing the dragon of the earth to rise up. We find this in Revelation 12. There's always in a new era a dragon that tries to confront for three years to stop the next move of God. I decree right now that we are receiving new bread and new anointing and our spirit is being stirred so that we can stand in this era of conflict and war against that which is trying to stop us from bringing to fullness the next move of the spirit of God in the earth realm. Now, with that, you have to understand that the heavens are changing. The Lord caught me up and showed me uh, the sickle uh, going through heaven, the harvest sickle. Now, if that's going through heaven, it's going to reflect down here on earth. So nation after nation after nation is in a valley of decision. And how we're making choices is creating vision for the future. The harvest sickle is beginning to move now in the earth realm. We're beginning to open our eyes to new harvest fields. We're beginning to see that these fields are very important and gain strategy to go into each field. But in the field, and but yet in the midst of it, lots are in the valley of decision. You can take that and you can go all the way back to when Jehoshaphat was leading a nation in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and the nation was in a valley of decision. Matter of fact, he, he said, Lord, the inheritance of the covenant that you have given us is in danger right now. That is a word for all of us. And yet Hezekiah called a fast he got through all the emotions of his fear and then a new prophetic word arose to give direction. And in that prophetic word, it says God's going to fight for us. But it said you're going to have to position yourself at the valley of Zim. See, there's a divine positioning going on of God's people right now. There's a divine positioning in nation go, nations that are going on. That's part of this word repair, is getting positioned to stand in the future. And so with that, remember, all they had to do was get positioned, worship in a new way, sing in a new way, display and change the atmosphere in a new way, and then God would come in and bring confusion to the enemies. I loose that over every one of us right now. Now, with that, we want you, uh, I want you to know that this air also is about the voice that's coming out, and especially this year, your house. We're in a supernatural, mystical atmosphere. We're contending for authority. We're determining our rule for the future. And that is so key to understand that. We each have a field. We each have boundaries. It goes all the way back to the garden where God planted a garden, put man in that garden, and told man to do three things. Watch after the garden, cultivate the garden, and multiply the garden. Now, with that, I believe we're each do, having to understand those three phases in the garden we have. You have a garden. 
Your garden has boundaries. You have to know your boundaries. And you have to learn how to rule in that garden. But you also must know one covenant principle that God displayed when he got to Abraham. He started in the garden when he made covenant with Abraham. He gave Abraham boundaries. But in those boundaries, he said, here are the enemies. I'm going to already give you the enemies. But there will come a day you will have to war those enemies to cause the transference of wealth that they are holding in your garden to be transferred over to you. Now that's where we are right now in what God is doing. And you also know there's an order in movement. Judah must go first. When the Lord's ready to move, he orders his army. That was a principle he displayed at that historical Passover in Exodus. He said he brought them out by armies. So you have to know the army units that are in war. You have to know how they're moving and you have to know the apostolic prophetic leadership that knows how to use sound to move those armies into place and to gain victory and triumph in days ahead. Now, we also want to, we want to understand this. With so much activity in the heaven, Lord Sabaoth is beginning to display himself. This is a time for new levels of angelic intervention. The angel of war has entered into our dimension. I woke up from a dream and there was an angelic host standing in the place where I seek God. I had to very cautiously ask him, who are you? And he said, I am the angel of war over harvest. Now this angel of war said we would be going through training for such a time as this. It was as if he was peering out over a world that was flat. And because I've traveled the world so much, I could identify the fields that were rising up. And that, you know, you would be surprised where harvest is going to hit. I saw fields in... Uh, Elam, which is uh, the area that is between Iraq and Iran. I, I saw fields all over. I saw fields in this nation that were going to be harvested. So we're in a great time of training. That's part of that reparation we're going through and that revival that we're going through and that realignment that we're going through. So it becomes very important that there are angelic hosts that are coming down in your territory and we're going to have to learn to work with those angelic hosts to gain the revelation we need here in the earth realm. See, there's a government in heaven that aligns with a government in the earth. That's what Lord Sabaoth is about. What uh, Lord Sabaoth is the God of the armies. He's the God of the armies of heaven and he's the God of the armies of earth. And there is a divine alignment going on. Now, we have crossed over this third year of this era into what I call the Passover of promise. I don't see that we have, are coming through and out of Egypt. I see that we are coming into the war that God has been waiting for us to come into over the promises that he's given us. Now, I'm having to rehearse my promises. And there will be a revival in this time of war. But remember, uh, it took him 476 years to get a group ready to go in to that which he promised and covenanted with, with Abraham. And that's where we're at. The first group that went in, wasn't they weren't willing to war. You can postpone your promise if you're not willing to go into the conflicts linked with the promise. 
Now, that's an important principle to understand. And you have to know that it becomes a war week by week by week. And you're gaining strategy week by week, just as it took them uh, that 40 years in their Passover of promise to establish. Some they took the high places, others they didn't. And so it becomes important that we understand that we're dealing with other thrones in the midst of our promise. And we have to know that we've got to enter in with caution. We've got to find our access at every point, And we have to gain revelation over how to deal with that throne. I decree right now timing of movement is being set on you. Now, see, Passover through the Word of God, we, we find several. We have a Passover of redemption. I'm talking about the Passover of promise where God changed leadership and Joshua, he told Joshua, fear not if you'll seek me, if you'll meditate day and night on what you've learned and what has been said over the last 40 years, then you will have success. Now that's a word for us. There's a Passover of double portion. That comes through Elijah and Elisha. There's a Passover that happens when we return, reconcile, redeem the time, and then move forward. There's a Passover of fulfillment. Yeshua showed us that when he passed over and experienced Passover in Jerusalem. There's a Passover where we advance. We find that in Acts where all of a sudden that angel had to visit. The people of God had to go into a new prayer time. This is Acts 12. Uh, they had to understand that they had great opposition and the enemy wanted to literally cut their heads off to keep them from advancing the kingdom. And yet there was this incredible, incredible prayer meeting at Rhoda, at, at Rhoda's house that caused uh, the, uh, at Mary's house where there was that servant who opened the door. Peter got out of prison. Angels came down. The same angel that comes down and visits us every time it's time to move forward. And all of a sudden, Peter doesn't even know whether he's dreaming or what happened. He just knows he has been released from prison to advance. That is an incredible Passover for us to understand. Then there's the Passover of threshing. That is, there's always a separation going on during Passover times. And again, we are living in a whole Passover era. So you're going through these processes right now in your life, getting ready to advance. And then remember, when Yeshua entered into Passover, the law of use began to manifest. He said, uh, go find this coat. So, and if they asked you why you need the coat, tell them I need it. And that is a key principle for us right now. God is saying, I will show you how to ask for what you need to use so you can fulfill prophecies that have been spoken. See, Yeshua knew there had been a prophecy about this situation. It came in the book of Micah and there he is fulfilling that prophecy but he had to know how to activate the law of use to fulfill it. I loose that anointing on you. Perhaps you can teach on that. How the law of use is so important in redeeming the time I explain it fully because we have to know the law of use every time we're moving forward and advancing in a new era. Now, what I want to leave with you this morning is this double portion anointing for Passover. Go with me and look at the beginning of uh, 2 Kings. Because I believe we, in this Passover of promise, 
there is something else happening with us. We are coming into a new anointing, a greater anointing. That's part of the revival of our spirit. And you have to remember, Elijah had made a mistake and pulled out of his stance against Jezebel. Well, we all make mistakes. But what the Lord did when he visited him in 1 Kings was he said, uh, you're going to have to anoint three people to help you accomplish what I sent you to accomplish. So he anointed Haziel, evil king. He anointed Jehu, a wild, crazy king who did crazy things. And he anointed uh, uh, Elisha to follow him and to move with him and to train under him. Actually, it was Elisha who anointed the other two. He was to concentrate on the next level of prophetic anointing that could cause that ruling structure of a territory to fall. And so, remember, he throws his mantle over Elisha. Elijah throws his mantle over Elisha, who is working out in the field. And Elisha receives the mantle. But you have to remember, it was seven years before he actually got to put that mantle on because he had to be in, in an intense training to prepare him to move forward in a new anointing. Finally, he follows Elijah through everything for seven years. And Elijah asked him this, what is it that you really want? He even told him to turn back, that it was too hard. And Elisha says, I want a double portion of what you have. I want that anointing you have. I want that father anointing you have to be passed on to me in double portion. And Elijah says, that's a hard thing. You'll just have to follow me to the end to receive it. One of the things you want to know in a new era is things are ending while things are beginning. You're getting to the end of one season, the new season's uh, beginning, and you're having to receive the mantle for the new beginning. Now, notice what happens at the very end of Elijah's life. Elisha is still following him, and Elijah gets to the Jordan. He parts the Jordan. There's a Passover. He goes across, and when he goes across, he is caught up into the heavenlies on this fiery chariot, and Elisha sees it. Now, while he's being caught up, that mantle that he threw on Elijah, seven years prior, uh, Elisha, seven years prior, all of a sudden comes down and drops. Now, Elisha has to make a choice. Do I take this mantle? He has to also know by faith that mantle has a double portion. Not just the portion that Elijah war in it, but a double portion that can complete what Elijah began. Now, here is the process we go through with that double portion. The first thing Elijah has to do is determine how do I cross over into my future? He is going to have to use that mantle to strike the water to open up the Jordan again so he can pass over back into the garden, the field, the promised boundaries where he was to operate. I think that's what we're going through right now. 
And then notice what that mantle did. It caused curses to break off territories. He gets back to the school of prophets at Jericho. Jericho, God had put a curse on it when it was destroyed. And yet it was rebuilt. The curse uh, had operation. The sons of the builder died. And yet here is a school of prophets in that territory that he had walked with Elijah in. And when he gets back, he says, they say to him, this city is beautiful. But it's got something wrong with it. The water's bad. And Elijah literally, by God, breaks off a curse off of a territory that God had cursed. Part of the double portion is we can redeem past curses so that we can move into the fullness of God's plan today. He then began to prophesy to kings. God began to use him. God gave him authority and strategies to break debt structures off of widows. He was able to break a spirit of barrenness so that seven years later even, there was such a testimony of that miracle and he was able to raise uh, that a child from the dead. That miracle and that testimony seven years later, now I'm talking about in time ahead, was able to restore and multiply what needed at that time. He was, in, he was able to multiply things and cause miracles of multiplication. So see, once you enter into the law of use, the law of multiplication kicks in. He caused healing strategies to come alive. These are so key. He was able to cause people to see into the invisible realm and see the angelic army, that army that is rising up for us right now. He broke economic strongholds off of a nation. In a day, he changed the economic system. He gave political insight. He anointed kings, but he also made sure that the structure that was still ruling failed. I think these are the two moments we're living in. A Passover of promise and a Passover of receiving a new anointing. I loose both of these towards you and I say operate and allow this to manifest within you. I decree right now a new anointing coming on all of you. I decree right now a new mantle coming on all of you. I decree right now that you will advance with a new portion and you will have wisdom on how to use that new portion and it will manifest. I decree that right now, and all of you just stand up, I decree right now, you will wear this mantle that God is bringing to California. You will find others that are wearing this mantle, and you will go forth to overthrow the structure that is trying to stop a nation from being revived. Blessings to all of you.